And right now, it's actually performed pretty darn well after 11 straight interest rate increases and a dollar that's pretty darn strong, yet it's still showing great strength and resilience. And I, I would say, um, you know, with, with the big BRICS meeting in October, 200 BRICS meetings up until that, leading up to that, to the big meeting in October in Russia, 200 meetings surrounding BRICS and, and the election in November, chances are we'll see much, much higher gold before the music stops. Andy Schechtman highlights the remarkable performance of gold, citing compelling data. Over the past few years, gold has shown consistent growth, averaging $1,773 in 2020, $1,798 in 2021, and $1,801 in 2022, with a notable surge to $1,943 last year. Currently, trading above $2,000, Schechtman emphasizes the potential for further escalation, fueled by central bank purchases and monetary expansion. Despite its steady ascent, gold remains overlooked, operating as the resilient tortoise in the financial race. Schechtman warns of an imminent shift, foreseeing a decline in the dollar's dominance, signaling higher gold prices ahead. With significant geopolitical events on the horizon, including the BRICS meeting and the upcoming election, with that, let's dive into the rest of the video to hear his full thesis. But I think it's important to think of things in the context that in the United States, we've become obsessed with instant gratification, uh, not being fast enough. And, you know, in if you look at gold, it is the tortoise. It is it's not the hare. If we go back to the beginning of 2000, for 24 years, gold has produced an annual return of 7.8%. When we compare that, for example, to the, to the S&P 500, 7%. Uh, when we look at the bond market, it's not even close. Gold has really, over time, outpaced just about everything else. And when we talk about, you know, let's just look at the last few years as an example. And you know, everyone is focused on the fact that gold hasn't performed as well as it should have. And I, I agree of that. I agree with that very, very much. But, you know, I think if you take a, take a step back and look in 2020, gold averaged 1773. In 2021, it averaged 1798. In 2022, it averaged 1801. And, and in last year, it was 1943. And here we are above 2000. And when you reflect on the, the central bank purchasing, um, which has been taking advantage of my, in my opinion, of the Western bank suppression coupled with the epic monetary expansion of the last four years. Um, I think the sky is the limit for the price of gold. And, you know, look, bottom line to me is, is that, um, Gold will go higher than anyone thinks possible. You have the, the biggest money in the world, the, the most sophisticated money in the world, the most well-informed money in the world, the central banks, that are accumulating it. They're using the suppression of the paper market. I mean, if you look on Shanghai right now, gold is priced almost $100 higher in Shanghai than it is in London and in, uh, on the COMEX. They are beginning to slowly arbitrage and turn up the heat. And... A common theme that I talk about over and over and over again, and you can apply it to so many different areas in the world, whether it be socially, morally, economically, politically, it's called logarithmic decay. And it's little by little by little by little by little, then bang all at once. And what we have been seeing is a little by little by little movement of gold higher and higher and higher, really outpacing just about everything, but not getting any attention. And this started in, 20, in 2000. Little by little, it has outpaced everything, but it's not flashy, and it is the tortoise. And But in the end, it does what it's supposed to do. In fact, in all currencies around the world, with the exception of the dollar, just about we're at all-time highs. And it's doing what it is supposed to do. Uh, the dollar is blurring it because of its inordinate, in my opinion, unjustified strength. But be careful what you wish for. It will reach those all-time highs. It will do so probably in a fashion that catches almost everyone off guard. But the real question is what, what happens in that environment? Because to me, it's not gold going up. It's the dollar going down. And right now, it's actually performed pretty darn well after 11 straight interest rate increases and a dollar that's pretty darn strong, yet it's still showing great strength and resilience. And I, I would say... Um, 
you know, with with the big BRICS meeting in October, 200 BRICS meetings up until that, leading up to that, to the big meeting in October in Russia, 200 meetings surrounding BRICS and and the election in November, chances are we'll see much, much higher gold before the music stops. Continuing the discussion, Andy Schechtman delves into the potential impact of BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and their evolving stance towards the dollar. Schechtman suggests that these countries may not necessarily require a shared trade currency to diminish the dollar's influence. Highlighting the concept of deep dollarization, he emphasizes a shift away from the dollar as the global settlement currency, particularly with BRICS nations favoring gold over U.S. treasuries. Schechtman warns against the repercussions of undermining trust in the dollar, citing recent geopolitical tensions and the threat of asset confiscation. I mean, I don't even think that they necessarily need to have a shared trade currency to chip away at the dollar. And if you'd look at the BRICS Plus and, and if they all demanded that they pay each other, I mean, let's just back it up for one second. You know, what is the petrodollar? The petrodollar is that the oil is sold for for dollars and then the proceeds are reinvested in treasuries. And, and, and let's go back to what we were just talking about. Look, gold has outpaced the treasury market hand over fist, not even close over the last decade and over the last uh, 25 years. And if you, if you realize that you're seeing massive um, divestment of, of treasuries by by the central banks like Japan and China and Russia and Saudi Arabia. They're all selling treasuries and they're buying gold, using the suppression of the way of the Western markets to drain the system. I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute. But point of it is, is that I think when you talk about it, if these countries trade with one another in local currencies until and if there is a local or a common settlement currency, and instead of putting the reserves, the excess reserves into treasuries, they put it into gold, which is what in, in large context, it seems to me that they are already doing. I, I think at this point, there doesn't have to be a clear replacement for the dollar as, as, as the global reserve, because in essence, what you are doing is chipping away at the settlement status of the dollar to such a degree that it begins to massively undermine the reserve status of the dollar. And in particular, when you're finding a replacement for the U.S. Treasury and a la gold, well, then it even has a, a bigger impact. But look, um, as far as I'm concerned, look, the Speaker of the House is an idiot, as is the, the current administration when they talk about confiscating Russian assets. Now, it's one thing to sanction them, like we did with Iran, and we just gave a bunch of that money back to them. But they're talking confiscating $300 billion in Russian assets and use it to continue to fight the war in the Ukraine. We just gave them another $60 billion, not a penny to the border, and we're broken, we're insolvent. But the bottom line is, is that the repercussions <clears throat> are cataclysmic for the dollar hegemony. And no country in the entire Southern Hemisphere will ever trust us again if we go to the uh, exorbitant step of not just freezing and sanctioning and and freezing uh, interest payments and not allowing access, but we confiscate it. It's a whole different thing. Look, let me just put this into context for one second. Aside from the fact that 35 more countries have formally applied to the BRICS and 20 more informally, aside from the fact that 20% of all oil transactions were done outside the dollar, aside from the fact that as it is right now, BRICS account for a larger percentage of global GDP, 37 to 30 what I, what I want people to understand is look at it from the perspective of these countries. We invaded Iraq 20 years ago in, in 2004, I believe, and uh, we have occupied their country for, for two decades after uh, toppling their regime, installing a new one, and destroying their country in search of weapons of mass destruction that, sorry, we didn't find them. Now, the rest of the world looks at us as being wholly hypocritical, where we set the rules as the world reserve standard. We can go in, we can sanction 14 of their banks 20 years after invading them, still occupy their land, and the money that they make in oil revenue last year, $90 billion, is held at the New York Fed. They can't even control what they do with the, the proceeds of their oil sales. They asked the United States for $1 billion last year, and we said no to them. So what did they do? Well, they formally now formally applied to BRICS. They made trading in dollars illegal if you own a business. They'll throw you in jail if you do it and confiscate your business. 
They have gotten rid of all dollars in, in the country. And, and no, there are no banks that hold these. None. None. Uh, in, in Iraq. And um, uh, they have just publicly said they want all coalition forces out of the country. They look at us as hypocritical, yet we can do these things. And, and, and there is no ramification. There is no pushback. I think, indeed, that de-dollarization is happening. And it's happening because of our, at our own hands. I mean, look at the interview between uh, Putin and um, Tucker Carlson. He said the exact same thing. Did, did the people in your country even know what the petrodollar is, what the dollar is, and that you're destroying this hegemony with your own hands? And he's right. And and you have to ask yourself, it's almost too stupid to be stupid. Could this actually be planned? Could we actually be dumb enough to not only sign an executive order to go green, which is the, the linchpin of the hegemony, but then weaponize the dollar in, in what most of the Southern Hemisphere views as completely and wholly hypocritical? This is not a trend that's stopping anytime soon, my brother. This is a trend that is only accelerating. But the Western media does such a horse crap job of telling us what's really happening, what's really important, that as Buckminster Fuller says, you can't get out of the way of what you don't see coming. And, and most people don't see this coming, yet you don't have to be very astute. You just have to dig a little bit to see that this is real and this is not ending. In fact, if anything, it's accelerating. In today's discussion, we've explored the enduring strength of gold amidst evolving global dynamics, as highlighted by Andy Schechtman. From its consistent performance to the shifting geopolitical landscape, there's much to consider. Remember, gold's steady rise and the potential implications for the dollar underscore the importance of staying informed. As we navigate these complexities, your engagement and insights are invaluable. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel like this video and share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.